What's going on YouTube? It's Tyler the Antenna Man. Today I'm going to test out and review the Clearstream 2 Max outdoor indoor TV antenna. Now some of you may have noticed that I didn't call an HD or digital antenna and that's because there's no such thing as an HD or digital antenna. A lot of antenna manufacturers are just kind of thrown in those keywords because most people have no idea what they're looking for when it comes to an antenna and those of you that know anything about antennas can look at this model and kind of tell it looks pretty promising because this this picks up UHF stations and this picks up VHF stations. The little flat ones probably won't pick up VHF stations that well. Hence why you shouldn't look up an antenna based on HD and digital keywords, rather if it's a good VHF or UHF antenna. I absolutely love the design of this antenna, not only because it looks like it's going to pick up UHF and VHF frequencies well, but it has a little stand to use as an indoor antenna so you can test it out, kind of see how it does well indoors. Keep in mind that most TV stations and the signals won't do a good job penetrating through the building material of your house, and you may have to mount it outside. And if that's the case, it comes with a pole that you can just put it onto, and you don't have to buy a separate antenna. Inside the box, you'll find the antenna with its stand along with a quick start guide and a J-pole. I noticed that the weatherproof boot on the coaxial cable kind of stuck out from underneath the stand and would push the antenna forward. I just used some tape to tape it down and that fixed the problem. Keep in mind that the antenna does not come with a coaxial cable, but that's actually okay because a lot of antennas come with the cheap RG59 cable, which doesn't do a good job at preventing signal loss. You could possibly lose TV stations just by using a cheaper cable. I highly recommend an RG6 cable. I have plenty of links in the description to 10 feet, 25 feet, and 50 feet cables, depending on whether you want to try it inside or outside. The antenna I'm currently using is kind of a leftover from my experiments, and I know it's not the best, but it still does an okay job. Here's a chart I made with the TV stations that I'm testing out along with their RF channel and the signal strength on my current antenna. The next column represents the signal strengths with those cheap generic flat antennas I tell people not to buy, and they buy them anyway and they wonder why their signal sucks. The last column represents the signal strengths achieved with the Mohu Supreme Pro flat antenna. Let's go see how the Clearstream 2 Max compares. I positioned the Clearstream model in the same position and direction as the other antennas for an accurate signal comparison. The signal strength on WNEP channel 16 was stronger than all three of the previous antenna models with the Clearstream. The signal strength on WYU22, which is on RF channel 13, was a little bit stronger than my current antenna, but not as strong as with the Mohu Supreme Pro. Same with 28, which is on RF channel 11. It was stronger than my current antenna and the Junkie Flat antenna, but not as strong as the Mohu Supreme Pro. However, the signal strength was stronger on Fox 56 than all three of the previous antenna models. Next, I tested out to see if I could get Fox 29's repeater station, which is really hard to get in my area, and it came in right away without having to move the antenna around. Even better than the Mohu Supreme Pro and my current antenna. I also had no problem pulling an NJTV's low-powered repeater station about 15 miles away. This is also tricky to lock in. I then tested its limits to see if it could pick up CBS 21 out of Harrisburg, which is about 80 miles away from me. And sure enough, it was able to lock it in the one spot that I'm able to pick it up. The Mohu Supreme Pro was not able to lock in CBS 21 like it was earlier, probably because the atmospheric conditions changed, but the Clearstream 2 Max was still able to lock in the signal. So as you can see, this antenna does an excellent job in pulling in very, very weak TV stations, including CBS 21 out of Harrisburg, which is about 80 miles away from me. There is a reason why I have been recommending this antenna for everyone who has asked me, hey, what's a good TV antenna that goes indoors? I don't want an outdoor antenna. I mean, it does a very good job. It works as if it is an outdoor antenna, but you can use it indoors and outdoors. Many of you may be able to get away with this antenna indoors, but if you're having trouble with some of the TV stations that are going in and out indoors, you may have to mount it outside. And don't blame it on the antenna. Don't say this antenna is a piece of crap because it can't get channel 6. It has to be outdoors in order to get optimal reception. If you mount the antenna outside, I highly recommend adding a preamplifier to make sure that you don't lose some of the signal and possibly some TV stations in the long coaxial cable. I have a link in my description to some preamps I recommend. For those of you in the Philadelphia region, keep in mind that 6ABC broadcasts on a low VHF frequency and most antenna models, including this Clearstream model, will not pick it up reliably. If you're looking for an outdoor antenna installation that will have low VHF elements, feel free to check out my website. I do service the Philadelphia region. Make sure you check out my other videos and subscribe to my channel for more antenna and cord cutting related information. Have an awesome day.